Hello and welcome back. At this point, we can start looking at trying to set up the, the fetch request. To do that, we can make use of this try catch block. So we can stub that out. And in the catch, we'll just grab a hold of any error that comes along. If we do receive an error, we can then use this error message div. We'll set the inner HTML. We can just get a reference to that error. And there should be a message key on on the error. So I'm just going to use optional chaining there to check if error, if error does exist. If it doesn't, we can just use uh, some conditional checking here. We can just set a fallback error, which will be a string. And we'll just say something very simple and generic, like fail to log in. Now that we have that catch set up, let's give ourselves some more space in our try block. The, the body of the try block here, we can just start setting up our fetch request. We can say cost response, and then we want to make a fetch request. And this is going to be asynchronous, so we can use the wait keyword. And just remember that we've, we've marked this as async, this whole function as async, so that a wait keyword will be able to use properly here. We can make a reference to our API slash login. And just remember that we, we're using the shortened string here for the API path because we've previously set up a, a proxy that's just helping us get over those cause errors. And then once we have that string path, we can just send in some options into our fetch here. The first one is a method and our login method is a post. And we can set any headers here that we need. The first one will be the, the content type. And in our case, we are using an application slash JSON. And the next key in our options here, we can use a body and then we're going to do json.stringify. Well, the JSON that we want to send through in our login request is just the username uh, and the password. And so those keys in our API are username. And in our case, we're going to send through the, e the email variable that we have here. We'll need to pass that through for the username key. And this key does need to be username. And that's just the way that we've written in our API. But with the password, it's going to be the password key in our API. And we've got the same value for our variable here. So we can just use the shorthand syntax. And the last key we need to set here is the credentials key. And it will just be a string of include. And this is just going to allow us to make sure that our requests and our responses are handling any cookies or tokens and any anything related to, to credentials. So that's just a setting we can set in there. Right. So now that we have that fetch request set up, let's just put a debugger here and take some time to inspect what's going on and start testing this out. So you can save your work there. And let's just send some random values in here and see what happens. So if we click on login, we're going to hit our debugger. We can see that we do get a 401 unauthorized back from our API. So that is good news. If we take a look at the response, we'll see that the status is 401 and the status text is unauthorized. We, we can take a, a closer look at this in our network tab over here. And in the payload, we can see that the password and username has been sent through correctly. Um, and the response is for one uh, unauthorized. So that's working as expected. Uh, let's try to test the positive case here. Uh, to do that, let's just register a user. We'll say John, John Smith, say John at test.com. And then a simple password of one, two, three, four. You can use whatever you want. And I'm just going to go through this process of registering a user. I see that it's working all correctly we get kicked back to the login page uh, with our email address and now i'm going to just use that password one two three four if we hit login here we're going to encounter our debugger that we've set and this time around you can see that we get a status of 200 with the the status text of okay and so i do want to just take a moment to take a look at the response that we get back here so to start to make sure that this whole uh, request and response finishes the whole the whole cycle we just need to implement some some more code so i'm just going to continue with this break point we head back over to our code you can remove this debugger and i'm just going to give us some more space here to work with and what we need to do now is we need to grab a hold of some of the values from the response so we can grab a hold of the message and this is going to be the message if there is an error otherwise the the log in response with the redirect to key and then so we can just do some object destructuring there and we can await our response and we'll use that dot json method that we we can make use of that's available to us and then now that we've kind of ended that request response cycle, let's retest that and see what we get. And I see I've made a spelling mistake here. That's my mistake. So you just make sure you spell response correctly and that it matches up with this variable declaration there. Let's just redo our request there. Uh, and this time, if we take a look at the network 
uh, tab here, you'll see your payload. And now you'll be able to see a preview of the response. You can see we get this redirect to key back. And that just gives us a, a path of where we want to redirect the user to. Let's take a, a short break here. We'll carry on implementing the rest of the work in the next one. So I'll see you on over there. Cheers for now.